from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 51. We've begun to ramp up your skills in researching and reporting on animals. Now this would be a good time to choose an animal in which you have an interest. Learning about the subject and Learning to share that knowledge in a more advanced way should provide plenty of motivation and excitement. So if you don't already have an animal in mind, think about an animal that you've always wanted to know more about. Now here's your chance to explore. For our reports, we're gathering and then presenting the basic information that would be required in a school setting. We'll present this information in an informed, informal science context. The idea is to give the reader a mental image of our subject as well as where and how it fits in with the natural world. We'll describe the animal and report on where it lives. We'll include the habitat. That's the focus of today's episode. We'll also report on the animal's classification and its reproduction and lifespan. Our research will further include the physical and behavior adaptations as well as its diet and comparing the subject to similar animals. So, so far we've spent some previous episodes in describing an animal. We also learned about the range and distribution of various animals and how to report on them. Today we take things a step further in looking at habitat. We'll also classify the distinction, or I mean clarify the distinction between range and habitat. So in this program, we're using these wildlife cards as our main source of information. If you don't have access to this source, I recommend using Wikipedia or the good old-fashioned encyclopedia as a source. Both strive to be factual and both are organized in a similar way to the wildlife cards. This map is from a wildlife card on river otters and shows the otters distribution range. Now otters live near bodies of water. They are commonly found near rivers but also lakes and marshes. Now if you're familiar with North American geography you'll recognize that these areas marked in red of the continent have abundant water bodies. So it's not unusual that river otters are found in these areas. Now we'll explore the connection between the distribution and habitats of river otters but first, let's look at the distribution patterns of some other animals. The American black bear is more widely distributed than river otters. Its range is represented by the red areas on the map. So we can instantly see the contrast between the range of the grizzly bear with the black bear. It's much more restricted than the black bear. Now this is an upside down view of Earth showing the range of the polar bear. Uh, there are habitat connections with them as well. For now, we're going to explore the distribution of this animal. This is a Virginia opossum. Now, opossums are North America's only marsupial, an early form of mammal that's not common in today's world. Before we dig into its range, let's learn more about this surprising animal. Meet one of America's most adaptable animals, the Virginia opossum. This one has a name. It's Violet. 
She was my guest on a recent episode of Adventures in Education, along with Leela Goulet and Julianne Rose. Let's learn about Violet and all her kin. And as you notice, we have another guest here. Can you uh, introduce our our third guest? Of course. This is Violet, and Violet, Violet is a Virginia opossum. And believe it or not, even though we see them all over the state of Oregon, they're not an animal that are native to this state. So have they spread out over all this time? They They've have. followed the pioneers out here? They sure have. <laughs> yep, their natural range is east of the Mississippi River. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. But one of the things that makes them so able to spread is they are very much an opportunistic eater. So they are able to eat pretty much anything and everything that they find when they're foraging out in the wild. And they are able to reproduce quite quickly. And they have up to 13 babies at a time. Well, you talking about the babies reminds me. Way back I was working at Jackson Elementary School. Mm -hmm. And one day, I was teaching fifth grade, and my, uh, about four kids came in late. And, and they were pretty responsible kids. So I said, what's going on? Why are you late to school? Well, Mr. Letts, we saw a possum uh, crossing the street, and there were all these baby possums going after her, oh. and we had to, tr to stop traffic so they could get across oh. the street successfully. <laughs> I said, story. well, you're not in trouble. You just, you know, your, your stock just went up. Yes, you know? A plus. <laughs> of course. A plus yeah. stock, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so they, were, they definitely had that lesson of, uh, of respecting animals and, and uh, caring for animals. So uh, possums don't have the best PR in the world. Let's put it that way. It's true, they don't, which is unfortunate because really they do a lot of great things for our planet. A lot of people think that they're dirty, gross animals, but one of the neat things about them is they actually cannot harbor the rabies virus. So wow, people look at them and think they're mean and they're going to get bitten and get sick, but their body is too cold for that virus to thrive. And they also are lovers of ticks. Ticks are one of their favorite foods in the entire world. And they eat tons and tons of them throughout the year and they help to eradicate Lyme's disease wherever they are found. Well, you're a hero then. <laughs> she sure yes. is. Now they're the yeah. they're a marsupial, right? They are, yep. So she's got a pouch right here underneath her tummy, and that's where she would carry her babies until they were old enough to cling in her fur here. Oh wow. Now I hear you've actually seen the babies taking the ride on mom? We have, yeah, and it's amazing that she's able to still move because they really pack from the head down to the tail on there, and it looks like she's got quite a load, but she can still scurry up and down a tree and run across the road, so they're able to carry them without a problem. Now, they're mostly nocturnal, is that right? They are, yes. So you're not going to see them out during the day very often. Usually when the sun's just going up or just coming down is when they'll come out and do all of their foraging and their activities. Now, they're so um, adaptable. It's, it's yes, pretty amazing. They are, and it's really neat that they've been able to thrive in a society where we've kind of started to take over really a lot of the natural spaces. And they do occasionally will get into things like garbage and they're great lovers of bird feeders and cat food that happens to be out in the neighborhood. So that's helped them to adapt for sure. Now I found out um, that there, there's a myth that I didn't know was a myth and that is that they hang upside down by their tail during the day. It's a very, <laughs> That's not true, right? No, it's a very, very common misconception. And I think it's probably stemming from all the cartoons and the movies that portray them hanging. And as cute as, of an image as that is, they don't actually do that. They only hang from their tail if they really, really need to because that's not a comfortable thing for them. So they'll find a little tree branch crook and they'll curl up in there and go to sleep, but they won't hang. Now, I uh, know that people uh, are familiar with the term playing possum. Yes. That does have some basis in reality. It, it does. It's such an amazing adaptation that opossums have. Their body will trick itself into thinking that it is indeed dying. So if an animal, let's say a fox, is coming after her and she's not able to run away, she's going to flop over and look like she's dead. She's going to smell like she's dead. Her body's going to secrete a bunch of really gross fluids that no animal is going to want to eat. 
and she can stay that way for up to four hours. What an amazing yeah. adaptation. It really is fantastic. I got accused of playing possum when I was supposed to get up and do something and <laughs> stayed in bed too long. So you're playing possum, aren't you? It's a compliment. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, this is, this is the kind of animal that you guys take out to schools to have students interact with? That's right, yeah. And a lot of our students that we visit say that they've seen them in the wild, but they've never been up close. They've never touched one. And a lot of the neat things about her are not things that are very well known. So it's really fun to get to share her with the students. Now, she's been raised a lot around people. That That's way? right. Yeah, she was found as an orphan when she was just a month old. Uh -huh. So we actually hand raised her, which was a big job. It was just mm -hmm. like having a baby, you know, feed every <laughs> two hours around the clock. So we lost a lot of sleep to this little one, but she was definitely worth it. Does she enjoy being pet? She seems to be quite comfortable oh. with it. Yeah, she doesn't shy away from okay. hands. Well, she doesn't no try to run away. And she's a lot softer than people a expect. A lot softer. You look at that fur and you think it's going to be real coarse, but actually it's pretty soft. Mm -hmm. I think the coolest part about her is her tail. You know, it almost looks like she has scales and she's missing that fur to be able to hold on to to branches. Isn't that oh, neat? Yeah, yeah it's kind of cool. I've never <laughs> touched a possum tail before. <laughs> well, I could just imagine how excited the, the kids get. Just a reminder that most opossums are not tame like this one, and they come with very sharp teeth. If you see one, look, but don't touch.